Good morning, dear students. Uh, my name is Farhan Mazar, and today we are studying Cambridge O Levels Mathematics Syllabus D. The subject is called D Maths 4024. We are working on the syllabus, and today uh, we are starting a chapter uh, about the vectors. And this is the first exercise of this chapter. This is exercise A from the book New Syllabus Mathematics 7th edition. The book is published by the Oxford University Press. And today we are going to attempt the exercise A. And uh, exercise A is about the scalars and the vector quantities, vectors in two dimensions, magnitude of a vector, direction of a vector, representation of a vector, directed line segment, starting or initial point, end or terminal point, vectors on the Cartesian plane, column vectors, components of a vector, equal vectors, negative vectors, vectors in a parallelogram. The name of the chapter is vectors. This is chapters number seven, and this is uh, from the new syllabus mathematics, seventh edition, uh, D4. The name of the book is also D4. And uh, the soft copy which I will be using uh, for this video, that is by the Shingli uh, printers. And in that book, uh, the chapter is five. So don't bother about the chapter number. In the Oxford University Press book, this is chapter number seven. In the Shingli Press, uh, the soft copy which I will be using, uh, in that is chapter number five. So let's start today's exercise. So uh, this is 7A exercise from the Univ Oxford University Press book, D4. And in the Shingli uh, publisher's book, it is chapter number five. The questions are exactly the same. So basically, I'm saying this is exercise 7A. So the first question, uh, the column vectors are given. And uh, in this, the upper number is, represents the X and the lower represents the uh, Y component of a vector. So in the first question, we have to find out the uh, magnitude of the vector and let's start. So the formula for the magnitude of a vector is uh, X square plus Y square. And we have a square root on the top of the of that. So the first question, we have three and four. We want to find out, let me call this vector A. This is the symbol for the magnitude of a vector. Magnitude means the length of a vector. How much will be the length of a vector? We call it the magnitude. So the formula is square root of the x square plus y square, and it will be square root of the three square plus four square. It will be nine plus 16, square root on it, 25, square root of the 25, and that will be five. So that is how you do the first part. In the second part, we have minus 5 and 12. OK, so uh, we will uh, go uh, minus 5 square and plus 12 square. It will be 25 plus 144. That will be 169. So when you take a square root, it will be 13. And the next one is the C part. And in the C part, we have minus 7, minus 2. So uh, we will have uh, square root x square plus y square. This is how you find the magnitude. So the square of the minus 7 and the square of the minus 2, we will add them. 49 plus 4, and that will be 53. Square root of the 53 is 7.28. Okay, so the D part is 0 and minus 6 whole 1 by 2. So uh, the square of the 0 and the square of the minus 13 by 2. So that will be 0 plus 169 by 4. It will be... Uh, so 169 by 4 and square root of it. So the square root of 169 is 13 and square root of the 4 is 2. So it will be 13 by 2, which will be 6.5. Okay, so the E part is 8, 0. The X is 8, the Y is 0. So it will be uh, X squared plus Y squared, square root of the whole thing, and that will be 8 squared plus 0 squared, and square root of the whole thing, that will be 64, square root of that thing, and it will be 8. So the square root of the 64 is 8. So this is how you will do the question number 1. 
So, okay, so we are going to the next question and that is question number two. He says, write down the negative of each of the following vectors. So we have the A part in the question number two, A part, we have 12 and se minus seven. So when you want to write the negative of a vector, you simply multiply the vector with a negative number. So negative number will multiply, minus one will multiply with the 12, minus one will multiply with the seven. And you will get a negative of a negative of this vector. So for example, the A, okay. So the A is given to you. So that's 12 minus seven. So minus A, which will be the negative of the A, will be minus multiply with the 12 and minus seven. So it will be minus 12 and seven. This negative will multiply with the 12. This negative will multiply with the minus seven. So it will become minus 12 and seven. So minus A will be minus 12, seven. In the same way, we have the question number two is B part. So it will be B is equals to uh, minus two zero. So minus B will be minus and minus two zero. So this minus will multiply with these two numbers. So it will become two and this will become uh, zero. So then we will have uh, uh, C, C part. In the C part, we have four and eight. So minus C will be, uh, minus will multiply with this uh, column vector, and this will become minus four, minus eight. And uh, in the D part, we have uh, minus three, minus 1.2. So minus D will be minus, and minus three, minus 1.2. So it will become three, and when this minus will multiply with this minus, it will become plus 1.2. So this is the negative of the D, and then we have the E part, zero and three, whole one by four. Mm -hmm. So the minus uh, E will be, uh, so both the sides you multiply with the negative. So minus E will be equals to minus, multiply with this column vector. So the zero will remain as zero, and this is positive, so it will become negative, minus three, whole one by four. So this is how you will do the question number two. So we are going to the next question, and the next question is question number uh, three. He says, if P is equals to eight and three, and the Q is equals to minus two and A plus two B, and the P is equals to Q, because these letters have been, they are bold, so that means they represent the vector. So it means that these two vectors, they are equal to each other. The question is find the value of the A and the B, because these two vectors are equal to each other. So uh, you can compare their x with the x and you can compare their y with the y, which means a will be equals to the minus 2 and the 3 will be equals to a plus 2b. So that is the methodology. So I will compare. So you can see here the p is equals to the q. So I wrote the column vector of the p and the column vector of the q. So now I will write. So it means that the x here and the x here, they are equal to each other. The y here and the y here, they are equal to each other. So a will be equals to minus 2. So 3 is equals to a plus 2b. So a will be equals to, in the place of a, I will put the value, which is minus 2, so plus 2b. So 3 plus 2 is equals to 2b. So 5 is equals to 2b. So b will be equals to 5 by 2, and that will be 2 whole 1 by 2. So this is how you will do the question number three. So the question number three, the whole question is showing up on your screen and you can pause the video and you can take your time with this question. This is how you will find the value of the A and the B. Okay, the next question is coming up on your screen. That is question number four. He says A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. It is given that the AB is seven zero, the column vector of the AB is given, the column vector of the BC is also given, minus three, four, and find the value of the magnitude of the AB, the column vector is given, we want to find out the magnitude, so very simple. The formula is square root of the X square plus Y square, so I will do this process. So question number four is showing up on your screen, so the AB is given, which is seven zero, so the magnitude of the AB is question, that's the A part. The formula is the square root of the X square plus Y square. So it will be seven square plus zero square. It will be 49, a square root of the 49, and that will be seven. So it means the length or the magnitude of the AB is seven. Okay, so 
That's the A part. In the B part, he says, uh, express each of the following uh, as a column vector. They are asking us two questions. They want me to represent DC in the column vector form, and they want me the DA. Remember, in the parallelogram, the opposite sides have the, are the equal uh, in the vector form. They are equal to each other. In the parallelogram, the opposite sides are equal to each other. So in the vector form also, they are equal to each other. For example, the DC will be equals to the AB. The DC, which is the question here, will be equals to the AB. In the same way, the DA will be equals to the CB. So uh, I know and the DC will be equals to the AB. I know the value of the AB, so the DC is very simple. In the same way, the DA will be equals to the negative of the BC because the BC value is given. But the DA will be that the DA will be equals to the CB, which is equals to the minus BC. So let me show you the first question they ask us to find the DC. The DC is equals to the AB because in the parallelogram, the opposite sides are equal in equal vectors. So, so the DC will be seven zero. The column vector of the DC will be seven zero. That is the column vector of the AB. In the same way, the DA is question. The DA, according to that diagram, will be equal to the CB. The DA, which is uh, the CB, is basically minus BC. So minus, and I know the column vector of the BC, which is minus three four. So because uh, here we have a negative. So the signs will change. So it will become three minus one. So this is how you will uh, do this question. So the question number uh, four, the whole question number four is showing up on your screen. And you can pause the video and you can take your time with this question. <laughs> okay, so now we are on the question number five. He says express each of the each of the vectors in the diagram as a column vector and find its magnitude, okay? So here we have the vectors are given. So let me increase the size a little bit. So you can see the whole question. So for, let's say, for example, if I want to find out the uh, AB, I want to find out the column vector of the AB, the method is very simple. Uh, you will have to recognize what is the starting point, what is the finish point, and from the starting point, I will check how much you have to move on the x-axis and then how much you have to move on the y-axis to reach from the uh, starting point, the tail of the vector to the head of the vector, the starting point to the terminal point. So uh, this is the starting point of the AB. This is the terminal point of the AB. This is the tail of the AB. This is the head of the AB. So on x-axis, how much I will move and on the y-axis, how much I will move. For example, one, two, three, four. So I have moved four steps to the, uh, you can say the left. And so it means that uh, it will be minus four. And how much on the y-axis I have to move? One, two, three. So you moved up, so it will be positive. So the column vector of the AB will be, the column vector of the AB, the column vector of the AB, uh, the column vector of the AB will be minus four, three. Okay, so now the magnitude of the AB is a very simple method. The magnitude, once I know the column vector, I can find the magnitude also. The formula is square root of the X square plus Y square. So the square root of the square of the minus four and plus the square of the three. So that will become the square root of the 16 plus nine. That will be square root of the 25 and that will be five. So this is how you will do the A part. And in the B part, I'm going to find out the value of the CD. So look the CD. So that's the tail. This is the head. This is the starting point. This is the terminal point. So I will check how much I have to move on the x-axis and how much I have to move on the y-axis to reach uh, from the uh, tail to the head. So uh, one step on the x-axis, so it will be positive one and two steps down, uh, so it means minus two. So on the y-axis, I move two steps down, that's why its value will be minus. So the CD will be one minus two. So this is the column vector of the CD. Now I want to find out the magnitude of the CD, so that will be the square root of the x square plus y square. So it will be one square plus uh, minus two square and square root on it. So you will have square root of one plus four and the square root of five, and that will be two point 
236. So this is how you find the magnitude of the CD. Then we have uh, the next part, and in the next part, we have to find out the uh, column vector for the vector P. This is the starting point, the tail of the vector, and this is the end point, the terminal point, the head of the vector. So I have to check how much I move on the x-axis and how much I move on the y-axis. So one, two, three. So I have moved three steps on the x-axis to the right. So it will be positive three. So one, two, three. I have moved three steps up on the y-axis. So the y value will be positive three. So the, uh, the column vector of the vector P will be three, three. And then they ask us to find out the magnitude of the magnitude of the P. So that will be the square root of the X square plus Y square. So that will be three square plus three square and square root on it. So that will be the square root of the 18 and that will be 4.24. So this is how you will do the C part. And then we have the Q. So the Q will be, uh, this is the starting point, the tail of the vector. This is the terminal point, the end point the head of the vector. So I will check how much I will move from on the x-axis, so from uh, in going from tail to the vector. So you will move one, two, two steps uh, to the left on the x-axis, so it will be minus two, and one steps down uh, parallel to the y-axis, so it will be minus one. So the column vector of the Q will be minus, uh, I wrote here minus three, whereas it is minus two. So this is a mistake, it's minus two, okay? So just uh, rectify it, it's minus two and one. So when you square it, it will become um, minus two square plus one square, so it will be four plus one, and that will be uh, five square root of the five, and the square root of five, you can find out what is the value of the square root of the five. By mistake, I wrote here minus three. It's minus two actually. Okay, so then we have the next part. The next part is E part RS, RS, RS is this one. This is the starting point. This is the end point. This is the tail of the vector. This is the head of the vector. So on the X axis, I have moved two steps. On the Y axis, we have moved uh, no step. Uh, so the X value will be minus two and the Y value will be zero. So let me write here minus two and zero. So the, the magnitude will be uh, minus two square plus zero square and square root of the whole thing. That will be the square root of the four and that will be two. So this is how you will find the RS. Then we have the UT. So in the UT, this is the starting point. This is the end point. This is the tail of the vector. This is the head of the vector. And you can see uh, we have not moved any step on the x-axis parallel to the x-axis. We have not moved. We have only moved along the y-axis parallel to the y-axis. So one, two, three, four. So you have went four steps up. So the x value will be zero. The y value will be positive, uh, I think, four. So the tu will be, the tu, uh, the tu will be, uh, so that's the e part, I think, uh, the TU will be, uh, it will be zero. In the column vector, it will be zero and four. So it will be zero, four in the column vector. So when you will find the magnitude of that, will be, it will be four square and plus zero square and square root on it. So it will be the square root of the 16 and it will be four. The length will be four. So I think we are done with this. So we are going to the next question. The next question coming up on your screen uh, is question number, I think question number six. And let me bring the question number six in front of you. So this is the question number six now. And on a sheet of squared paper or graph paper, draw the following column vectors. You need to draw the x-axis and the y-axis and indicate the scale on the squared paper or the graph paper. Okay, so we have to represent three, two. This upper number represents, this is a column vector. So upper number represents the X and the lower value represents the Y. So it tells you from wherever you start, uh, from that starting point, you move three steps uh, to the right or parallel to the X axis, and then you move two steps up parallel to the y axis so let me show you uh, so for example uh, this is uh, question number 6a part 32 
So suppose this is your starting point. So I will move one, two, three along the x-axis because positive. So I'm going to the right, then positive two, one, two, two steps upward. So that's my end point. Join the starting point with the end point and put an arrow towards the end point, the terminal point. So this is how you represent a vector on a graph paper. So that is question number six, A part. Then we have minus 4.5 and eight, minus 4.8 and eight. So um, let me reduce the size. Okay, so minus 4.5 and eight. So you can put a dot and start from anywhere. And so let me, let me say I started from here. So this is the tail of the vector or the starting point. So from here, uh, the X value is minus 4.5. Minus 4.5 means you will move 4.5 steps to the right side parallel to the X axis. So one, two, three, four and half. And so that's 4.5 and minus 4.5, you move to uh, minus 4.5 steps to the uh, left. And from there, the X, the Y value is positive eight. So it means you go eight steps up. So you can see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is my terminal point. This is the head of the vectors. Join the tail of the vector with the head of the vector with a straight line, put an arrow towards the head. So this is that vector. So I hope you understand how this is done. Then we have C part, which is minus five, seven. So minus five, seven will be, um, okay. So here we have minus five, seven, and it means uh, wherever you put the dot from, that's your starting point. So then I will go five steps to the left parallel to the X axis, one, two, three, four, five. So you have gone five steps to the left a parallel to the X axis, then the Y is positive seven. So from here, I will go seven steps up, one, two, three, six, seven. So join the tail with the head and with a straight line and put arrow towards the head. So this is how you represent this column vector on a graph uh, paper. So then we have zero and minus two and one by two, uh, minus two whole one by two. So let me show you. So here in the D part, you will not move any step on the X axis. So wherever is your starting point, uh, you will not move along the x-axis. And the y is minus 2.5, which means you go two and a half steps down. So then join the tail with the head. So that, that will be your vector, put arrow towards the head. So this vector represents this column vector, zero minus 2.5. Okay, so then is we have uh, E part, E says negative of the, six minus one. So, okay, first of all, I will find out the negative. So negative of six minus one, let me call it E vector. So the minus E will be, and this negative will multiply with this. So you will have minus six and one. So uh, wherever your starting point, just put a dot there. That's your starting point. That's the tail of the vector. So from here, I will go minus six uh, on the X axis, which means go six steps to the left. I'll parallel to the x axis, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then you have to go positive one on the y axis. So uh, I will move one step up uh, parallel to the y axis. Then I will jo join the starting point and the end point, and that line will represent that vector. The arrow head will be towards the finish point, the terminal point, the end point, the head of the vector. So this vector represents the negative of this vector. Then we have F part, which is the negative of minus three zero. So first of all, I will find the negative of that vector. Let me call that vector F. And so minus F will be minus multiply with this column vector. So it will become three and zero. So wherever is my starting point, let's say this is my starting point. So I will move three steps to the right on the X axis, positive three X means uh, you move three steps to the right from the starting point. And the y is zero, so we will not go up, we will not go down, so that's it. So this is my end point, so I join the start point with the end point, and the arrow will be towards the head of the vector or the end of the vector or the terminal point. So this vector represents the negative of minus three zero. So this was how you do question number six.
Okay, now we have question number seven from the exercise 7a. So it says uh, two column vectors a and b are such that the a, the column vector a is x minus 3, 2 minus y. The column vector b is 5 minus x, y minus 9. If the vector a is equal to the vector b, so if both the vectors are equal, find the value of the x and of the y. Write down the negative of uh, A as a column vector. Then we have to show that the magnitude of A and the magnitude of B, they both are equal to the square root of the 53 by 4. So uh, first of all, I will equate both the vectors. Uh, okay. So the vectors, they are both equal. A and B, they are equal. So I will make these two column vectors equal to each other. So X minus 3 will be equal to the 5 minus X. So the X plus X will be equal to... 5 plus 3, so 2x will be equal to 8, so x will be equal to 8 by 2, and x will be equal to 4. So now I got the value of the x, now I will compare the y's. So 2 minus y, 2 minus y will be equal to the y minus 9, so it will be minus y minus y equals to minus 9 minus 2, so minus 2y will be equal to minus 11, negative negative will be cancelled, so y will be equal to 11 by 2. So, which will be 5.5. Uh, so, now I know the value of the y and I also know the value of the x. That was the first question they asked us to do. First and second question. Okay. Uh, first question, sorry. First part. So, write down the negative of uh, a as a column of vector. Now, I know the value of the x and y. The x value is 4. Y value is 11 by 2. So the A is X minus 3 and the 2 minus Y. So it will be 4 minus 3 and 2 minus 11 by 2. So 4 minus 3, that will be 1. And 2 minus 11 by 2, that will be minus 7 whole by 2. So minus 7 by 2, sorry. And so that means 1 and minus 3.5. So this is how you present the uh, A. Now minus A will be, you multiply both the sides with the minus. So minus A will be equals to minus will multiply with this column vector. So it will become minus one and that will become positive 3.5. So this is how you do the, uh, the this second part. Now in the third part, he says, show that the, uh, the, the column vector A is equals to the column vector B. So, and that is equals to square root of the 53 by four. So uh, we will uh, go, uh, we will find out the value of the, first of all, A. The A is 1 and minus 7 by 2. So, the, you know, the magnitude formula is the square root of the x square plus y square. So, we will have the square root of uh, 1 square and the, the plus the square root of the minus, the square of the minus 7 by 2. So, under the square root, we will have 1 plus 49 by 4. 4 plus 49 and the whole thing divided by 4 and we have a square root on top of it. So 4 plus 49, that will be 53 and downstairs I will have 4 and we have a square root on top of it. So this is what we were supposed to show. And now I will try to find out the well, the magnitude of the B. So it will be 5 minus X and Y minus 9. That's the B. Uh, put the value of the X and the Y. So 5 minus 4 and 11 by 2 minus 9. So it will be 1. And downstairs, you will have minus 7 by 2. So I will find out the square, the magnitude of the vector B. So that will be x square plus y square, square root of that thing. So you will have 1 square and plus the square of the minus 7 by 2 and square root on it. So it will be 1 plus 49 by 4. So when you will add them, the two fractions, it will become 4, 4 plus 49 and the whole thing divided by 4 and that will be the square root of the 53 by 4. So you see the magnitude of the A and the magnitude of the A was also 53 by 4, square root of the 53 by 4. And the magnitude of the B is also uh, square root of the 53 by 4. So it means the magnitude of the A and the magnitude of the B, they both are equal to each other. So this is the question number 7A, third part. Okay, so uh, the next question, the B part, he says, if the magnitude of the A is equal to the magnitude of the B, express the Y in terms of X. Then they want us to find out, explain why A may not be equal to B. Okay. 
So now they say that the magnitude of the A and the magnitude of the B is equal to each other. You know the A is equal to, uh, where is the A? Let me show. A is equal to X minus three and two minus Y and the B is five minus X and Y minus nine. So I will, uh, their magnitudes are equal. So X minus three whole square plus two minus Y whole square, square root on it will be equal to the magnitude of the B, which will be five minus X whole square plus Y minus nine whole square. So we will scale both the sides. So when you square both the sides, so this square root on this side and square root on this side, and they both will be canceled. So when I will open this X minus three whole square, it will be X square minus two into X into three plus three square plus, then I will open this whole square. So it will be two square minus two into two Y plus Y square equals two. When I will open this whole square, it will be five square minus two into five into X plus X square. When I will open this Y minus nine whole square, it will be Y square minus two into Y into nine plus nine square. So it will become X square minus six X plus nine plus four minus four Y plus Y square equals to uh, 25 minus 10 X plus uh, X square plus Y square minus 18 y plus 81 so uh, it will become you know x square minus 6 x plus 13 minus 4 y plus y square equals to it will be x square minus 10 x plus 106 minus 18 y plus y square so uh, we will have minus x square x square will be cancelled y square y square will be cancelled from both the sides so you will have minus 6x plus 13 minus 4y equals to minus 10x plus 108 minus 18y. So I will bring all the terms which have y on the same side. Uh, so minus 4y plus 18y is equals to minus 10x plus 6x plus 106 minus 13. So 14y will be equals to 93 minus 4x. So y will be equals to 93 minus 4x. And the whole thing divided by 14. So this is how you represent the y in terms of x. So let me show you the whole thing. It's a, it's a bit of thing. Uh, so this is the start of that part. And then we have this part. So we got the y value in terms of x. Then uh, what they want me to is that explain that y uh, that's possible that A or B, they are not equal vector. You see, their magnitudes might be same, but their direction is not same. Their magnitudes are same, but their directions are not same. So these are two vectors who have the same length, but their directions are op their directions are different from each other. So that's why they are not equal vectors. Their magnitude, although, is equal to each other. A and B might be equally length, but their direction is different. So vector A and the vector B are not equal vectors. So this is how you do this question. That is question number seven. Okay, so now we are going to the next question, and that is question number eight. He says, if AB is a column vector A is given, that's minus three, four, and CD is zero, five, Show that the magnitude of the AB and the magnitude of the CD, they are equal to each other. Okay. So the magnitude of the AB will be X square plus Y square and square root of it. So it will be minus three square plus four square and square root on it. So it will be nine plus 16. So that will be 20 square root of the 25, which will be five. So this is how you do question number eight, first part. In the second part, question number eight, he says, explain why AB vector is not equal to the vector CD. Uh, even though AB magnitude is equal to the CD magnitude. So see, both these vectors, they have the same length, but they are not equal vectors. Why? Because their directions are not same. So their lengths are equal. Their lengths, although they are equal, uh, but their direction is different. That's why the vectors are not equal to each other. Although their magnitudes, they both are equal to five, so, but their directions are different. So we will say that these two vectors, they are not equal to each other. So this is how you will do question number eight. 
Okay, so we are now going to the next question and the next question coming up on your screen is this question and their question is, what they are saying is the figure below shows the positions of the points X, Y, A, X and Y, where the X, Y is three, two. Three, two means uh, if you move three steps to the right and then you move two steps up. So this is already here. He says express the A, Y as a column vector. So A is my starting point, Y is my end point. So one step to the right on the X, parallel to the X axis, and then one, two, three, four, four steps down. So it will be one minus four, that's the column vector. So the A, Y will be equals to one minus four, Y, because you move one step here, then you went four steps down. So when you go towards the right parallel to the X axis, that is a positive, positive thing. So when you move one step to the right, so that is one. And because you went four steps down parallel to the Y axis, so the Y value will be minus four. So this is how you represent the A Y column vector. Okay, the next question is, he says B is a point such that X, Y, B, A is a parallelogram, express the Y, B is as a column vector. So this name is very important. Pay full attention to this thing. He says X, Y, B, A. X, Y, B, A. So Y should be joined with the B. So the A will be joined with the X. So A, X, Y, and the B will be somewhere here. And it should make a parallelogram. So Parallel to the X, Y, the A, B will be parallel to the X, Y. According to this name, the, the order of this name, the order of the vertices is very important. So you can see here, I have drawn here. So this is A, X is already there. X, Y is already there. So because uh, the B will be here somewhere, so you have to join the Y with the B because this is a parallelogram. So the Y, B will be equals to the X, Y, sorry, X, A. Or you can say A, B will be equals to the X, Y. So from A, I will go one, two, three steps to the right and then two steps up. So I will get the point B. Or you can go uh, from Y, I will go two steps to the right and one, two, three, four, five, six, six steps up. So one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six steps up. So that will give me the B. So once I have the B, I will join the A with the B and the Y with the B and the parallelogram will be completed. So then their question is express the Y, B as a column vector. So the Y, B will be uh, two steps to the right, six steps to the uh, upward. So the column vector of the Y, B will be two, six. It will be two, six. Hopefully you understand. Okay, now the next question is, uh, it's the fourth part of the question number nine. He says, do the two vectors. Then their question, sorry, third part. He says, C is a point such that X, Y, A, C is a parallelogram and express the A, C as a column vector. So the name is X, Y, A, C, which means X, Y, A, C means X, Y, A. So you will join X with the Y, Y with the A. Then we have to complete the parallelogram. So the C will be here somewhere. X, Y, A, C. So the parallelogram will be X, Y, A, C. So the C is here somewhere. So um, how much is this one? One, two, three, one, two. So you will go three steps to the one, two, three, and then goes those two steps down. So here you will have the C. So this AC will be parallel to the YX or equals to the YX. So AC will be minus YX basically. Okay, or you can say if, if you go from Y to A, so the X to C will be the same. So if Y to A will be one step to the right, which, will mean, which means minus one, and one, two, three, four, so four steps up. So one step to the right, uh, to the left, and four, four steps up, one, two, three, four. So here you will have the C, and you can join them, and that will be your parallelogram. 
So here you can see uh, it is uh, this X, Y, and A is already on the grid. So from Y, uh, check how much is the Y, A. So it is one step to the right and then one, two, three, four steps up. So same you will do here, one step to the right, then one, two, three, four steps up. So you get the C point or uh, it is, uh, how much is this one? Uh, one, two, three. One, two, three, three steps to the left, and uh, to the right, sorry, and two steps upward. So from A to C, it will be the negative of the uh, the X, Y. So you will go three steps to the left and then two steps down. So you will get the point C, then you can join them. So there, the A, C will be equal to the A, C will be equal to the Y, X, which is minus X, Y. So it will be minus of the three, two. So it will be minus three, minus two. So this is how you do this. Uh, you can find the AC. Do the two vectors AB and AC have the same magnitude? Is the AB vector and the AC vector equal to each other? Why or why not? You see the both have the AC is three, two and the AB is three, two and the AC is minus three, minus two. So when you will find their magnitudes, their magnitudes will be 100% equal to each other. So it means both the vectors, they have the uh, same length, but their vectors, their vectors are not equal. The reason is their direction is different. Here you have three, here you have minus three, here you have two, here you have minus two. So the vectors, they are equal to each other, but the, their direction is not equal. So my answer is their lengths are equal, but their directions are different. So they are not equal vectors. So they are not equal to each other, although their lengths are same. So this is how you will do the question number. Uh, that was the question number nine. Let me reduce the size. So you can see. So we have the question number nine, and that is showing up on your screen. This is question number nine. Okay, so the whole question is showing up on your screen. Okay, so we have the question number 10 and it says if A is equals to N and then downstairs you have minus three, find the possible values of the N such that the magnitude of the A is seven. Leaving your answer in the square root form if necessary, okay. So question number 10, uh, very easily we can find the magnitude. The magnitude of the A is already given, it is seven. So when I apply the formula for the magnitude on this column vector, so it will be the square of the N plus the square of the minus three and the square root on top of it, it will be N square plus nine square root on top of them. That is equal to seven. So I will square both the sides. So the square and the square root will be canceled. So you will have n plus nine equals to the square of the seven, that's 49. So the n square will be equals to the 49 minus nine. So n square will be equals to 40. So the square root of the n square and square root of the 40, I've taken square root on both the sides. So the n will be equals to the square root of the four into the 10. So n will be equals to two under root 10, two under root 10, two under root 10. So that is how you do question number 10. And uh, then the next question is question number 11. He says on a sheet of square paper or graph paper, draw the following column vectors. You need to draw the X axis and Y axis. The, the, and indicate the scale on the square paper or graph paper. So the, the question is two times of the five minus three. It's a column vector, so we have to represent its two times. So now a scalar number is multiplying with the vector. So this is five minus three, so we have to find its two times of the A. So I represent, I will represent the vector A and then I will again put a vector A here. So let's say I start from here. So this is five minus three, which means, uh, Okay, so uh, question number 11, it's A part. Uh, you have to represent the two times of the vector A. So let's say this is my starting point, suppose. 
this is my starting point. So what I will do, uh, I will go five steps to the left, uh, to the right, and then three steps down. So that is A. Then again, I will go five steps to the right and three steps down. So that will be another A. So when I join this tail with this head, this starting point, this finish point, that will represent two times of the vector A. That will represent the two times of the vector A on the grid or the graph paper. I hope uh, you understand. Okay, so the next thing they have asked us to find out is uh, three times of the negative of the minus four three. Okay, so so in the question number eleven and its B part, uh, the the vector B whose column vector is uh, minus four and three, so we want to represent the minus three B. So when you multiply it with a negative number and it will become plus four, it will become minus three. So uh, okay, so I will go when I will represent the minus three B, I will go four steps to the right, three steps down, four steps to the right, three steps down, four steps to the right, three steps down. I will join this starting point with the end point and that will represent the minus 3b. So uh, that is how you present the minus 3b on a grid on a graph paper. I hope uh, you understand. And this is how this is done. Okay, so uh, we are on the question number uh, 12 right now. And in the question number uh, 12, the first question they're asking is if u is equals to 13s and downstairs we have 4t, and then they say u v is equals to 60 plus 20 and downstairs we have 18 minus 7s. So their question is if the u is equals to the v, find the value of the s and of the t. So you see this u vector is equals to the v vector. So if these two vectors, they are equal to each other, so their x values will be same, same, and their y values will be equal to each other. So from there, I will, I will be able to find out the value of the uh, s and the t. So here's the column vector of the u vector, and here's the column vector of the v vector. So they, these two vectors, they are equal to each other. So I will I will compare their x with the x and the y with the y. So 13s is equal to 60 plus 20. So 13s minus 60 is equal to 20. That is my first equation. Then 40 will be equal to 18 minus 7s. So the 7s plus 40 will be equal to 18. So now these two are the simultaneous equations. So we can solve them so very easily. Uh, I will try to make the coefficient of the t same. So for this purpose, I will multiply this first equation with the 4 and the second equation with the 6. So 4 bracket 13s minus 60 bracket close plus 6 bracket 7s plus 40 bracket close is equal to 4 into 20 plus 6 into 18. So this will become 52s minus 2040 plus 42s plus 2040 equals to 80 plus 108. So minus 2040 plus 2040, they will be canceled with each other. So now the T is eliminated from here. Uh, so we will have 52S and plus 42S, that will be 94S. And that will be equal to 188. And S will be equal to 188 divided by 94. So the S will be equal to 2. So... Uh, we got the value of the S. I will put this S equals to 2 in my first equation. And so here we go. 13 uh, S minus 60 equals to 20. In the place of S, I will substitute 2. So it will be 13 into 2 minus 60 equals to 20. So 26 minus 60 is equals to 20. So minus 60 is equals to 20 minus 26. So minus 60 is equals to minus 6. So T is equals to Minus minus is cancelled, so that t will be equal to 6 by 6. So the t will be equal to 1. 
So this is how you will find the value of the S and the T, and this is how you will do question number 12. Okay, so we are going to the next question, and next question is the last question of this exercise. Here we have a uh, grid is given to you. So let me show you this. He says that uh, uh, question number 13 in the figure below consists of a square grid, uh, square, sorry, A, D, G, uh, G, J. Here we have, where is that? A, D, G, J. So it's a square. And the four identical rhombuses. So we have four identical rhombuses. One is A, a, J, K, L, it's a rhombus, it's all sides are equal in length. Then we have uh, G, H, I, J. G, H, I, J, it's a rhombus. And D, E, F, G, D, E, F, G, D, E, F, G. And the A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, these are the four rhombuses this diagram is very very important okay the question is explained why the a b is equal to the i g this is a b and this is i j the question is why the a b is if you will find the a b's column vector it will be one two this 2.5 minus 2.5 and one two four five it is minus 2.5 minus five is column vector same is the column vector of the ij. So they are equal in length and they are equal in magnitude because the column vector of the ab and the column vector of the ij is exactly same. So the ab vector is equal to the ij vector. They have the, they have the same direction and equal length. Okay, so they have the same direction and equal length. So that's why the vector AB and the vector IJ, they are equal to each other. Then the question is name two other vectors that are equal to the AB. If you look at here, AB, look at here, AB. The same, same vector can be who else is exactly same as the AB. That will be the HG and the DC. So this is my answer. The the AB vector will be equal to the IJ vector and the HG vector and the DC vector. HG, HG, and this DC and the IJ, they all are equal to each other. Then their question is, uh, name all the vectors that, that are equal to the KL. KL, KL, it equals to the KL, we will have uh, J, A, G, T, F, E. So they are equal to each other. So let me show you the KL will be equals to the J, A, G, G, D, and F, E. Okay, then their question is find the, all the vectors which are equal to DE. Okay, so where is DE? So equal to the DE, we will have the GF and uh, KJ and the LA. Okay, so the D, uh, DE will be equal to the JF, KJ and LA. So this is my answer here. Then the question is uh, the vectors which are equal to BC. Let's say BC. Okay, where's the BC? BC. So the AD, J, G, I, H. BC will be equals to the AD, J, G, and I, H. Then we have... Uh, A K A K A K. So A K is where? Where is A K? I. Okay. So this is A K. So the equals to the A K, I will have E G. E G. Only one thing. Okay. 
So EG, AK is equal to EG. Okay. Then their question is give a reason why the AG and the DG, they are, DJ, they are not equal. A, G, and the D, J, their directions are not same. Their length looks same, but their directions. I have written here the column vector of the A, G, and the D, J. Uh, they are not equal because their directions is not same. You can look at their column vectors. The direction of their column vectors is different, and that shows that they have different directions. And if you look at actually on them, so A, G, and the D, J, they are different. Their directions are different, so they are not equal to each other. The uh, the line segment D, J, and uh, H, J have the same length and are parallel. Explain why they are not equal to each other. That's the D part. And you see this is B, D, and the H, J. And you can, I can show you from here, B, D, BD is this, and uh, JH, HJ, they are here. So you can note down their column vectors. Their column vectors uh, shows that their directions are not same, and uh, they are not equal because their direction is not same. Their column vectors are not exactly same. Their lengths might be same, but their directions are different. That's why they are not equal vectors. Give a vector that has the same magnitude but opposite direction to the BC. Okay, so the opposite to the BC, so opposite to the BC. So here you have the BC, so the opposite to the BC will be DA, G, J, H, I. So they are the, they are the same length but opposite direction. G, D, uh, here we go. D, A, and G, J, and H, I. Then their question is uh, opposite to E, F. Where is E, F? E, F. So opposite to this will be G, D, J, A, K, L. Okay. So G, D, G, J, A, and the K, L. Then their question is L, A. L A L A L A. So the opposite to the L A will be J K F G E D. So they will be equal in magnitude but opposite to the L A J K F G and E D. So this is how you will do this. So uh okay. So let me reduce the size so you can see the book together. So my dear students, there were 13 questions in this exercise. So today we have completed the exercise uh, 7A. And uh, that's the first exercise of this chapter. And I hope uh, that, has, that will help you. So... I hope that uh, you will find this video interesting and useful. If you have learned uh, from this video, uh, please like this video, share the link of this video onto your Facebook account and onto your Twitter accounts and onto your Instagram. Because when you share the link of this video, uh, that helps me to promote my channel. So it's a great blessing for me that I can make these videos and according to my knowledge and my skills, very humble skills and i'm not that much expert on the it but i try to make the videos uh, and i'm able to touch so many lives around the world students who are studying this ah uh, thank you very much everyone have a good day god bless you all